Hey guys, Lucky here. Today we're going to talk about Guild Wars 2 and what is happening in the game right now. I was invited to a sneak peek of what's to come with their 2022 expansion called End of Dragons. So let's take a look at the new expansion and why the community is especially hyped for what's being added this year. Before I begin, I just want to say thank you to Guild Wars 2 for sponsoring this video. Guild Wars 2 was a game I was already planning on trying out in the near future, so this was an opportunity I was very excited to accept. End of Dragons is the culmination of the Guild Wars story up to this point and will serve to tie up a lot of storylines that have been introduced throughout the game's life. But let's be clear, End of Dragons is not the end of Guild Wars 2, far from it. While closing some stories, it will allow them to open many more. In End of Dragons, we will revisit Cantha, which closed itself off from the world after Guild Wars 1 over 250 years ago. Until now, we have had very little idea of what exactly happened inside Cantha during those 250 years, but now we will finally get to see how the events of those years and the events that have unfolded during Guild Wars 2 have changed it. When designing End of Dragons, ArenaNet wanted to incorporate the verticality that Heart of Thorns brought and lean into the freedom of movement from Path of Fire. If you have no idea what that means, don't worry. Basically, these zones will feel massive and your ability to explore them will be aided by the plethora of mount varieties and gliders the game has to offer. Speaking of, one thing that Guild Wars 2 arguably does better than any MMO is mounts. There are mounts that go fast like insanely fast. There are mounts that can jump crazy high. There are mounts that can dive underwater. In End of Dragons, they are outdoing themselves yet again with the addition of the Siege Turtle Mount. The Siege Turtle Mount is a co-op mount that allows coordinated gameplay between the driver and the passenger. You see, the passenger isn't relegated to simply being chauffeured around, though they can definitely do that if that's what they want. But they have the option to activate speed boost for the Turtle Mount as well as cannons. Yes, you heard me right. You can fire cannons that actually do significant damage. Meanwhile, the driver can drive the mount while taking advantage of its attached rocket thrusters that will allow the Siege Turtle to jump high into the air when navigating terrain. The Siege Turtle cannon damage is respectable, but don't worry, it won't be replacing unmounted combat in difficult raids. End of Dragons will be adding multiple new zones, with each region striving to bring its own look and feel. And man, did they absolutely do an amazing job with these new zones. After my sneak peek with the developers, I wandered off and walked around a little bit and I was blown away by the scale and the beauty of these areas. The game's mobility systems work to make exploration so fun, as every cliff was an opportunity to glide, and every body of water was an opportunity to explore what lay beneath. Speaking of water, also being added is fishing. But not just fishing off a beach or docks, you can also summon a water mount, aka a skiff, and fish off of that with your friends. Yes, another unique mount. They have added hundreds of different fish all across the world for you to discover as you peacefully fish by yourself or while chatting away with friends. End of Dragons is also adding five new master tracks, which are basically skill lines for things such as your siege turtle, your skiff, and fishing. Each of these master tracks have their own stages of progression that you can level up. End of Dragons is also adding 16 new legendary weapons based on Aurene and man, are they gorgeous. I couldn't stop looking at mine once I put it on and I started running around with it. Beyond that, they are adding another new guild hall on the beach of Xingjie Arena. The acquisition of this guild hall will require your guilds to group up and adventure through the area, taking down enemies and fighting bosses within to ultimately unlock it for your guild. Think of it like a raid, where your guild gets to use the location of the raid as their guild hall after they conquer it. This is such a cool idea. Why are more MMOs not doing this? The guild hall adventure is designed to scale dynamically to the size of your group so that whether your guild is big or small, it will be possible to conquer it together. Like so much of the area that I saw in the sneak peek, the guild hall is absolutely beautiful. From the architecture to the bright color palette, the abundance of clear, beautiful water, the entire space looks like it will be a great place for guild members to collect and decorate together. Also worth mentioning is that there will be fishing spots with unique fish and perhaps even some that can be found inside these guild halls. So get ready to get your guild, get your skiff, and start fishing. And last, but definitely not least, every class is getting a new elite spec and new sets of weapons they can use. In other words, this includes new abilities with brand new animations and completely new builds for every class. This is huge. I will go into a lot more detail on all of these things as we dive more into Guild Wars 2 and of Dragons over the course of the next month. I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek of what's coming on February 28th, and if you did, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more MMO content. Which addition to End of Dragons are you most excited for? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm Lucky Ghost. You can find me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash luckyghost. I hope to see you there and until then, I'll see you in the next video.